Oh my gosh, what a week, but welcome back everybody. It is episode number 378 of the OMG Hour. I, of course, am Sean Evans, otherwise known as Zion Tane. And I am Pico, Mr. Second Place, and let me say, Sean, it is weird just talking to you. I know. We've had a busy week, Tico, you and I. Uh, Last two weeks, we we have scheduled six or seven interviews uh with kickstarter campaigns and it's been a lot of fun yet it busy um yes last night we sat down with adam lawson who is a a hollywood uh assistant director he produced he's a director assistant director assistant director he was the producer and director of will wheaton's tabletop as well as some geek and sundry stuff with felicia day he is the writer and director of escape the night with joey graceffa on youtube and we sat down with him last night because he is also the co-creator of the escape the night board game that they now have on kickstarter that was an amazing interview you know, it's it it's on our channel him. now. Uh, check out the interview; it's available now. But you know, we spoke to him for a good ten minutes before we actually got into the actual interview, because yeah. the first thing he did, Tico, was he stopped. He said, first of all, Tico, I love your backdrop because he just he saw your games, and yeah. he is as much of a gamer as we are. Like you could tell his passion about gaming. And so we just talked for 10 minutes about what we love and what he loves and introducing him yep. to stuff that he hasn't heard of yet. You know, so he's going to be, he and his wife are going to go out and buy um, uh, Betrayal Legacy because we recommended it yeah. to him. Such a great game. So I'd love to, I'd love to hear how, uh, how that goes as he plays it. I'll have to keep in touch with him. But yeah, yeah. it was uh, what a great, great guy. Like uh, I went into that interview and I think, you know, Tico, I was actually... I don't know, I was feeling a little stressed, a little ang- ang- anxious about it. And yeah. as soon as he jumped on and was just like, hey, tell me about you guys. What are you guys like? It's it's like that anxiety just went, whoosh. it's like, okay, this is cool. We're, we're good. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah, it was it was an exceptionally comfortable interview. Really, really great guy. Really nice to talk to. I, I hope we get a chance to, to chat with him again. And, uh, you know they've already hit their funding goal for their their thing, so they are they're in the you know end stages of their their Kickstarter. They have I think about two weeks left. Ten two, two weeks left. So yeah, they're, it's it's now uh, you know just closing that up. So wish him all the best on that, and then hope we get a chance to to chat with him after to see how uh, how that uh, that panned out. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, well, yeah. It's going to pan out quite well. But uh, what's yeah. neat about that campaign, uh, and he details it on the interview, is that the sort of like the premium edition of the game, which has a little bit better components, is only available to Kickstarter campaigns. Like there's a standard yeah. bundle which is going to go to retail, but the 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 deluxe edition, which has plastic pieces, like model pieces, and it's got a better. Um, a timer and it's got like a gold foiled box that sort of thing um yeah the upgraded on- pieces yeah it's only available if you back it so uh that's that's really cool you yeah. know what's i like it when campaigns do that honestly because i like to feel as someone who backed a, a, a campaign a kickstarter for a game early um i want to feel like i'm getting something you can't just go to the store and buy for yeah. the same price oh, wow. right absolutely you want that 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 early adopter you want that yeah. early adopter reward i was the and you can show that off like here's my copy of the game you can see that i i discovered this before anybody else i'm the first one who played escape the night i'm the first one who played like a pandemic or something like that cuz and i and i'll show you cuz i've got this initial box that nobody else has done so i was the one who was the trendsetter on that you want that feeling as a as a right. as a backer on kickstarter yeah and there have been other products that i've kickstarted that uh, well, actually, you know, I go back to the days of the Ouya, you know, yep. the yep. Ouya actually hit the stores for the same price I paid for it before I even got it. Yeah, that as that a Kickstarter backer. You yeah, know? that frustrated me, too. Um, I remember waiting for that and then seeing it show up in EB Games on the shelf at a commercial retailer before we even had it. 
edition for mine, and I actually had the deluxe edition, which was one of the colors you couldn't get elsewhere. But for like for t- so ten bucks less than what I paid for it, it was available at EB Games first, and it was it was frustrating as like, you know, I they, they should have shipped out and fulfilled their Kickstarters first rather than right. the retail. Um, one other game, it's not huge, but uh, um, Exploding Kittens, which whose Kickstarter literally exploded. Um, what's nice about that is, well, yes, you can go to the store and buy the game. You can get the same game I have. It's just one little thing that shows that I was a Kickstarter backer is I have the magnetic box that as you open it, it actually meows as you yeah. open the box. And that was only given to Kickstarter backers. It's a small thing, but it's yeah. something It's like, you know, I've got this thing and I only have it because I backed the Kickstarter to begin with. And there's just something special about that to me, you know, and I've, like we said, we talked about last week, I've backed like, <laughs> I probably backed a Kickstarter a month since the pandemic started. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's a long winded way to say, go check out our interview with Adam Lawson. Uh, we did a couple of interviews. We have more coming up. Um, like we've got two more interviews scheduled already for next week. We have one yep. interview that's going to go live on Monday. So I, you know what, Tico, this, this kicking tables series that we started last week yeah. is like blowing up in our faces. And I'm like, what is, this is crazy. Like yeah, they, we, what's we, we going almost on have here? more episodes of kicking tables than we do of the OMG hour at this point. Almost. I mean, give it another week. We're going to, we're going to pass. <laughs> almost but you know what there's i've always enjoyed speaking to developers you know back when uh you know um when sid and i did lost treasures of gaming the like the spin-off show yeah where we actually spoke to the developers of old games i just love talking to people i love interviewing there's something i've always noticed this about myself is there's something i just love about interviewing people you know like not everybody can do it i'm not saying this to brag i'm certainly not trying to put myself ahead but i just i feel like there's something very natural that comes to me when it comes to interviewing people and i love it i just there's something i thoroughly enjoy about it yeah i think part of it is is that you and the person you're interviewing and i've noticed this in in a lot of the questions and stuff like that even in some of our first ones where you barely let me get a word in because you're so excited is you have that passion for the product and they have a passion for that product and when that meets up it creates something really really unique in an interview process because it's it's not natural conversation it's a conversation it's not question and answer it's a conversation and i think that that leads um, very, very smoothly when you're both uh, passionate about the genre and, and that project. Yeah, so. and I've always tried to approach, even since the first time we started this show, uh, you know, back in 2012, anytime I had a guest on, I always wanted to approach interviews from a natural conversation point of view. Not just yep. like, here's question one, here's question two. It's like, I, I don't like that. It feels too forced. I want it yeah, to feel it, like a conversation, and and that's why I love doing it. Yeah, absolutely, and it's been so much fun to get a chance to talk to these people. Um, you know, people putting their 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 content up on Kickstarter, people who have a passion for that product um, that doesn't necessarily get the the funding that big you know big business does. So yeah. they are very passionate that they've taken the time to create this, and that's been coming through in the interviews that we've been doing. Is oh, we've yeah. really been seeing that passion from the people we've we've chatted with about the different games, and uh, again, you and I are are you know mildly passionate about board games as well. So I think that it, it translates well, yeah. translates very very well. Now we just need to get uh, the views and the clicks and the subscriptions and all that lovely stuff that's going to help us do this even longer and further. But. Yes. We digress. Let's move into video gaming territory. Um, you still sure. still playing uh, your PS4 more often than I, not? I am paying. So I am. I am now treating them like they both turn on at the you know the same amount of time during the day. Um, I have been playing quite a bit of uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, I can never too. say that right, but Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, but, yeah, that's correct. Okay, well, that's then. correct. Okay. Um, so I've been playing quite a bit of that still. Uh, absolutely loving the like this the feel of it i'm i'm now doing my completionist stuff where i'm like i gotta go around and find all of the 
mythic quest. I'm down to one left, I think, nice, of the nice. mythical quest. Have you uh, finished which, the story, or are you just no, do, no, no, no? Yeah. I, I do the same thing that you do. Is like I'm going to put the story on hold while I run and do a bunch of things. Yeah, and me like, too. Okay, I'm going to do a couple more story things to advance some stuff, and then I'm going to do more side S stuff. And uh, I'm just I'm really loving the development of your character and the weapons and the um, yeah. Uh, costumes, whatever the, your your armor that you can find, yeah, and stuff your like outfits, that. And just, yeah, yeah, and just loving the like, just trying to get everything. There's there's um, something to be said about a game that doles out new abilities um, slowly as well, because it really keeps advancing the game for you as a player. Like, oh, cool, I've got a new ability all of a sudden, you know, that I didn't have yeah. for the first 20 hours of the game. Um, yeah. But also, what I love, and I wanted to mention this last week, what I'm really finding refreshing about this uh, is that when you clear an area of uh, Mongolians, it actually stays clear. It doesn't repopulate. You know, like a lot of games where it's essentially endless it's endless enemies. Like even in Assassin's yeah. Creed uh, Odyssey, if you cleared uh, an encampment of the enemy and completed all the check marks to, of the activities to do, you come back to it and they're all back again, right? So it's still full. I mean, in in this game, I love the fact that you can clear it and you actually take it back for the countryside, man, right? And it's yeah. it's not taken like the Mongolians don't come back. Yeah. It depends on the type of game. Some games, like Assassin's Creed, where certain content um, for you to unlock requires certain things, certain achievements and stuff requires you to kill so, so many people. And it's if it's one of those type of games, you need enemies to respawn. I had a game that I finished, uh, Far Cry, one of the Far Cry 3, I think, Far Cry 3 or 4, where there was, in order to unlock all of the skills, one of them required you to do, like, a double assassination from a jump. Oh. Like, you know, you land on top of a guy. And, and I had ki had cleared everything. All right. I, they didn't repopulate. And they didn't repopulate. That was Far so Cry I, was no, 4, I think. Yeah, there was no enemies left for yeah. me to kill. Right. And it became, now I can't unlock this achievement because well, there's nobody can, left for me to kill. You can now because they've since added the they've, reset forts right and that was but that was something that came i believe because of that yeah. because of that very very reason is they yeah. they allowed the, so if it's a game that that you need to kill a certain number of people or or something like that there's any grindy achievements or trophies then you kind of need them to to pop back up you also don't want to have too much in some areas where you're just going to be walking and nothing happens you well i do want... i do actually i do and i'll tell you why because for me, it's a sense of achievement. It's a sense of actually accomplishing something. If I go yeah. into these forts and I kill all these guys without being seen, and I and you know I take over the fort, for me to come back to that fort and find they've come back, I feel like well then what was the point? At least this is um, this gives me a sense of of actually doing something in the game, you know, actually bringing or taking. Uh, control of the island back from the mongolians it yeah. has because if that never happened i'd feel like then what am i doing if they just keep respawning then how am i actually reclaiming the land this makes me feel like i'm reclaiming the island i would mind if they had certain things such as like you've taken you've taken these back and they then try to to take them back after that like if there's some sort of back and forth conflict that's not ridiculous I'm okay with. You have to clear a certain zone or a certain master area before, you know, these things are free from being taken back over. Because, I mean, if you took it over, what's to stop them? They're like, one guy just took over the fort. We've got 20. Let's go take it back. Well, in this case, I actually think thematically it makes sense because they don't have an unlimited force. They absolutely do. They have a monster closet back at the main gate that they just keep I'm spawning talking, Mongols. No, I'm being serious. They... The yes. Mongolians do not have an un, unending force. And if you start taking them all out, their force is getting smaller. And the game is reflecting that. And that's what I appreciate. You would, you would think, like, they've just, like, after, like, the 50th fort of, like, 15, 20 guys that you've taken out, you would think that they would just stop fighting you. Right. Like, they'd see you coming. It's like, um, <laughs> didn't that guy kill, like, yeah. <laughs> 400 guys already but they don't know today? that they don't know that we're like they don't have carrier pigeons 
reporting on things. Well, they have the Eagles. They have the Eagles. There's there's messaging going back and forth. Anyway, let's move on. We've talked about this game for three weeks now. It's just it's that All good. Right. It really is well, that good. There's been there have been limited releases for the last three weeks and, and not that much stuff. And I it's did play been that good. It has. Thank I you. did play some new stuff on the Xbox. Why? Cuz, you know. Cuz. Uh so uh <laughs> destroy all humans, Sean. Why? I don't know if destroy you remember all this Mo- title. I'm, pl- I'm playing the game Destroy All Mongolians. Yes. Well, they are human, so you're you're doing part part of the of work. The work. Okay. Uh, so, Destroy All Humans is a game from the Xbox 360 yep. um, that they have remastered and re-released because that's what they do, and we all know that I love that's what Chico loves remasters. because he wants the I achievements again. I do want the achievements again, and it had been a very long time since I played this game. I was surprised at some of the things. I forgot that it was mission based. I don't. Um, I've never played the game. I don't even know how oh. it plays. Well, you play as an alien, and let me guess: um, you have to destroy well, you, all the humans. You get to destroy all the humans. So you have. There you go. So you are uh, part of the Furon race, and uh, the Furon race uh, is an is fur- asexual race. Is furious. Yes, they are furious, but they are they are an asexual race that cannot reproduce. They are they are cloned, um, and because they have. No reproductive organs or something. Like that's it's it's early on in the thing. I guess that's why they do all the probing and stuff like that out of frustration. <laughs> um, in any case, I guess that's what you do when you're frustrated. Go on out yeah. and probe someone. Probe. Um, there from I guess way back they had like some early Furons had visited Earth, so there is some Furon DNA. Wait, are they wearing masks? Human... I hope they're wearing masks. No. <gasps> no, it's 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 set it's set in the 1950s, so we're okay. Uh, all right. Pre 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 COVID, we're good. Um, and so you are the traditional little green alien, and you you're running around, and you have two different things you can do. You can you run around with your weapons, and you have your traditional your zapper, so and you you hit the guys, and it's it's all sort of done in this 1950s campy style. Mm-hmm. Your alien has a Jack Nicholson impersonation voice, basically. It's Men in Black. It's military. Um, it's like 1950s, like Leave It to Beaver, Pleasantville, small town. So you go around, you have your zapper, you have a grenade launcher type weapon, you have a probe weapon, which fires a little green thing in, up the butt, it grabs the brain and pulls it down through the... Oh my gosh. Where's the gameplay footage of this, Tico? I, I, it's, it's uploaded and I forgot to tell you before the show... <sighs> but we will share that next week wow. as I tell more about this. Wow. Uh, and, and then you can also fly your spaceship, your flying saucer around with a death ray that can just take out houses and buildings. And um, there's an abducto ray that you have where you can lift guys up and carry them to different spots. And it is just a, an overall fun game. It does. It looks great with the remaster. Um, I was surprised at how, how well it, it looks um, considering how old the game is, it's at least ten years old. Really had fun with it. I will. I will make sure that we have some footage of that for next week to share. Well, let me see if I can get some now for you. Oh, is it that that quick? Is it that quick? Can it be, it can be done? No. Nope. Oh, let me uh, fix this. All right. Now here's the part where you turn into a samurai. <sighs> oh man, that's that. Uh, that doesn't that doesn't work. I thought I could do this on the fly. On the fly. You're good, Sean. You're not that good. There you go. Oh, you are that good. All right, and you have a jetpack. I, I I forgot one simple little step. Yeah. So again, you just you're flying around, and you can switch your weapons at will. It is not like the most forgiving game. Like you have shields, but you can die pretty quickly. Um, you have a yeah. You're that's the incinerator. Um, which basically turns guys. They do that thing where they glow, like from the the movies. They they'll glow and this turn to ash. So, uh, it, you said this is an HD remake, or is it like you played the original? How does this differ from the original? It well, it's the exact same game. It's so it's it's uh, uh yeah, oh, it's an oh, HD it's, up upresing. Oh, it is okay. Yeah, so it's it, the same game. It just looks prettier. All right, and and you just destroy all humans. You just destroy all the humans. You can you can disguise yourself. So if you get close to them, you can you can take over uh, their their look. There's the Oh my gosh! You just yeah. destroyed his head. 
That is well, no, no, that pulled it pulled his brain through his body. And out, uh, that's the out anal is probe. That, the anal probe, yeah, right out of his butt. Yeah, yeah. great. Um, you can, you can, um, you know, you can get people to, you can enthrall them with one of the things and get them to follow you. You can, um, you can make yourself look like people to, uh, you know, to get into certain spots. Um, it's it's just a fun game. There's a bunch of different missions, and I just I really enjoy that. Really have fun with that. Um, right. I also played a new game that came out on Game Pass uh, this week called Carrion. You, and it is a... And this takes place what are those after ones? Destroy All Humans when the Carrion come and eat all the human bodies. No. No. Oh, it on. is... What are the games called where it's like you're looking at it from a side but you can move around in the different spots? What type of style is that? From the... You took a 2D platformer? Yes. <laughs> That's the word I couldn't think of on a Friday. A 2D platformer <laughs> where you you play an it's alien... It's like a Mario game. What do you call that? Shut up, Sean. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> um, it's, it's a 2D platformer where you play as an alien entity escaping... There's footage of this, too, if you want to do that same thing. No, there I'm isn't. To find footage. No, there isn't. There's not? No, it was just the one. I, I did. Nope, no. you keep going. No, but you don't have it. Anyway. All right. All right. Um, so you play as an, an alien entity. So you're basically playing as the blob or the thing from Stranger Things. If you've seen Stranger Things. Yeah, the Demigorgon. Yeah. No, 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 the blob thing. In, oh, uh, season. From, from season three. Season three, yeah. Okay. Anyways, you're you're basically playing that you're in a military facility and trying to escape. You can you know, pull you know, use your arm tentacle things to pull out grates and crawl through the grates, grab people, eat them, find upgrades and stuff like that. Just a fun little game. I've only played about an hour of it so far, but I'm having fun like moving from like area to area and you just and like the, the alien the games now, don't you? It seems to be. I'm not sure if it's an alien or a. I mean, it's an alien. It's like the thing, but it's, like a blob it's the with venom. tentacles. It's, it's the venom symbiote. It could be, but it's it's red, so it's carnage. Ooh, even better. Yeah. Because otherwise so, you'd have to that, become uh, an anti-hero. At least as carnage, right. you don't have to. No, you just be a jerk. Right. Um, so yeah, that's that's out now on, on Game Pass. Uh, and yeah, worth absolutely worth checking out. Fun game. Okay, I haven't played anything except no. Ghost of Tsushima. I've also been busy a little bit this week with our YouTube channel, so that's fun. It just yes. doesn't leave much time for more gaming. I sit down every night and I watch television with Dorothy, you know, and then she usually, because she works early in the morning, so she goes to bed about 9, 9.30. And then I've been, like, working on videos, or and then by, like, 10 or 10.30, I finally sit down to play maybe an hour of a game. So that's yeah. been my life for the last two weeks. It's been busy. Uh, you know, a, a good kind of busy, but still busy, you know what I mean? Because yeah, I know. it's also one of those busies where you're like, I hope this pans out. <laughs> I hope this turns into something. <laughs> yeah. Listen, all we can do is put the, the quality and effort into it that we're doing. And uh, I have a feeling that it will uh, it'll turn into something nice. I hope so, too. Uh, in the news, uh, Marvel's Avengers, the game, not, uh, you know, we got to specify now because... Every time I yep. see news about Marvel's Avengers, I think, oh, movie. No, that's the game news. No, movie. No, TV. Mo no, no, serial. No, uh, running shoes. No, <laughs> no. Uh, it's the game. Um, Hawkeye will be coming to the game. I know a lot of people were like, where's Hawkeye? You know, when they've been announcing it, talking about it. But apparently he has been revealed as a post-launch hero. So he will be coming for yes. free after the game launches. You know, I, I still don't know how I feel about this game, Tico. Like, I don't. Nothing about this game excites me from what I've seen of it. I know it. I'm, I, I don't I'm know excited. how I feel. I'm excited to try it, but I don't know if I'm. I'm not clamoring I'm not, to have it in my hands. I, I'm, yeah, I'm not like, it's not one of these like, oh, I can't wait till this is out. I mean, when it's out, I'll try it and I'll probably like it. But I don't know. It's just it's it does not grab me the way most of most triple a titles no. would like stuff that you're excited about and you're waiting for and it's just not doing that yet like the spider-man game when they announced it and showed footage i was like this is freaking cool this right? i want yeah this i want and then this avengers 
while at first was a bit off-putting because it doesn't feel like the Avengers that we've known throughout 10 years in the movies, it felt yeah. very off, off-putting because it's like, that's not Captain America. What are you talking it's, about, right? It's not the movie likenesses that no. we're used to, and it's not the cartoon likenesses that we're used to. It's, it's a weird, it's almost like somebody's like, hey, we have a license for this, but we don't have a license for this. Um you know, make up your, your own. uncle wants to throw. Yeah, yeah. See if your uncle wants to, to be Captain America. Like it's like they you, you, it's like somebody cast a bunch of their friends to be in a play about the Avengers. Yes. Yeah. A cheap play. Um, but yeah. but the game I've seen gameplay and I and I don't know. It just it feels like a button masher to me. It's just a brawler is what it kind of feels like. Do you know what I mean? I don't like brawlers. Yeah. And that's what this uh, feels I, like to me. It feels like. A prettied up version of of something like that I played, like you know, like the Transformers game, where it's like go to this area, punch a bunch of guys, and yes. move everything up, and then the area is going to clear up, and then move to this area and punch a bunch of guys, and then yes. this guy's going to come in, and you're going to switch characters and punch a bunch of guys with this this yes. thing. That's and exactly right. I don't necessarily right. know if I'm excited about that or not. No, it's I, prettier I, than most of those ones, but yeah, but those games never stand the test of time. They don't last. In, in yeah. for for me, I lose interest very quickly in that kind of a game because it is just monotonous. Yeah, right. It's the same thing over and over again, and you know, and and speaking of things like Ghost of Tsushima, it's not monotonous. Well, yes, there's specific activities to do. There's so many of those activities that it's easily it doesn't become monotonous because it's not over and over again, right? You can you can yeah. go from a mission to clear out a base to going to a simple mission like trying to get to a shrine or another one where you compose a haiku. Like it's just all these different, very, very differing game styles in one world makes it interesting and non monotonous. Whereas I find brawlers are just the same thing over and over again, switch characters, do it again with a different power set. Yeah, and it's and it just it doesn't excite and, me. And you're and in, in this game here, you're going to be limited to six, seven heroes to do it with. Like if you do something like this, like in X Men Legends or um, uh, what was the Marvel one? Why can't I remember? Ultimate Alliance. Sean. Ultimate Alliance. Like it was, you know, like it was it was the same thing. You'd go to one area and everything, but you had there's like eighty or ninety different characters that you could find and unlock and be throughout that game, and it and it made it more fun because. I can put together my own super team of, you know, like how many different versions of the Avengers are you going to put together with the seven guys that you got on this? Right. Right. So yeah, we'll see. Um, we, whatever we'll see. I, I, you know, I've seen the gameplay. I see the news articles, but every time I see the name, I'm like, Meh. more Avengers news, whatever. When it's, when it's out, I'll get excited. Yeah. And, no, maybe I won't. When it's out, I'll try it. And if it's good, I'll get excited. If it's not good, then I'll tell you that I didn't like it. Well, speaking of things I didn't like, Cuphead okay. apparently is now coming, or is out, on the PS4. Is. I didn't even know that was going to be a thing. I thought it was an Xbox exclusive. Turns it, out it's it not. Not anymore. Well, it was. And it, yeah, I think Microsoft said, hey, why not? Let's, you know. We've gotten all the money we can out of the Xbox people. Let's uh, let's toss it out on there and see what Sony's willing to. All I remember is, like one one mission into that game, I'm like, I've had enough because this is freaking hard. It's like yeah. re it's like punishingly hard. Yeah, I have never played this because I know how hard it is. I know I'm not going to get more than two steps in. No, you um, and you're not. It's it's ridiculously hard. It is a yeah. punishing punishing game and i have had enough of that kind of thing yeah i and this is this is one of the titles that came out just before game pass started so it was one of the first party titles that did not get included on game pass it is so now is it not no no it's not okay no it is a, and, and it's still selling at 26 dollars canadian and yes. i as as much as I like pressing buttons, I'm not going to spend 26 bucks for 30 seconds of gameplay, it's get frustrated, and throw a controller. No, it's not worth it. Um, yeah. I know there's a lot of people out there, yeah, <coughs> JJ, <coughs> who loves punishing games, but uh, not for me, thanks. <laughs> not yeah. for me. Let's move on to television or movies, as the case may be. Uh, Netflix. Uh, 
today actually is it today or yesterday the new transformers war for cybertron anime series started i watched the first episode tico they're about 25 minutes each six episodes in the season holy crap this is fantastic it looks amazing um i believe it's still peter cullen as the voice of optimus which you know is awesome but um, this goes so far back in the story of Transformers that Bumblebee isn't even an Autobot. Like, it, yeah, he's so far back. It goes, you know, basically Bumblebee at this point is just he's just a, a Transformer living on Cybertron. And he's trying to avoid the battle. Because if you really think about what the story between the Decepticon and Autobots are, the Decepticons are sort of like this anarchist group that is trying to... In their minds, they're doing the right thing. They're trying to bring peace to Cybertron, but through oppression. And yeah. the Autobots are this, this what they consider, like the rebels in Star Wars. They're basically the terrorists trying to stop the government, right? This, this anarchist government. And so Bumblebee, in this case, is just, he's neither. He's not, he's not in the army. He's not in Megatron's army, and he's yeah. not a re- he's not a rebel. He's just a, a, a transformer living his life on Cybertron, right? And in this yeah. case, he's he's sort of like a scavenger, and uh, it's sort of it, it's it starts there with how he becomes involved with Optimus, uh, and and there's a lot of new characters that I've never seen before, some some new female transformers, which I actually appreciate. I've always liked when they started adding things like RC characters, like RC, the female Autobots. So it's nice to see more of them coming in. I think they're great. The one thing that I find odd, I've always found this odd about transformers and I would love to see, uh, there's two couple things. One, when they're animated, they're the, the, they're all metal bodies, they're robots, but the metal seems to like warp as they like turn their waist. For example, the, you can see the metal. It's like, why didn't they design the characters to swivel instead, like an actual robot would? You know what I mean? Like, if he's turning yeah. his waist, have his legs stay there, but have his torso actually spin, so it looks like he's a physically metal object. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that... I, I personally don't think that would be a hard thing to do with a an animated body, right? Because that's, well, to- that's the pivot point of the character, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The other now, thing I find yeah. weird... What do you mean by now? Well, I mean, now it would be a lot easier to do that. Back when they first did this, like, I, I, I get your point. But no, this is a brand new it, cartoon. Brand new. Yeah, it's, yeah. so you're talking about, so you'd like to see it now. That's what I'm Especially talking about. Like, I don't understand why they the don't. Date. No, I'm talking oh, about this it, show. This I haven't seen this show, Sean. Yeah, I'm talking about this show. They, they, don't, they don't do that. The other yeah. thing that I've never understood, and they do it in this, in this show as well, Tico. Just so you know, we're talking about this show. Transformers, War for Cybertron. Yeah. Okay. Got it? Yeah, I'm listening. Okay. I'm listening. When the Autobots are running away, they run away. Wouldn't it be faster to transform and drive away? Why are they running? I'm <laughs> sure that there is some, like, backstory that, like, it's, like, difficult to transform under stressful pretenses or something like that uh, it's like performance anxiety you know how the Hulk performance could, he anxiety he could he couldn't turn into the hulk for the longest time maybe that's what it's like if they're nervous they can't no you know turn it's not into that a the hulk would couldn't he wouldn't the hulk was afraid of because what thanos did to him and he was tired of bruce using him and then discarding him the hulk wouldn't come out well, not that he that's yeah he couldn't maybe that's how it works for transformers too oh uh, okay anyway you know tra- transformers war for cybertron uh i think it's wonderfully done it looks amazing um i'm looking forward to watching the the other five episodes there's only six episodes i hate when shows are so some, small like yeah there's some good stuff coming to netflix uh today was umbrella academy oh yeah two. I will watch that when I am finally through with Fear of the Walking Dead Season 5. All right. Then I'll move Good. on to Umbrella Academy Season 2. Well, Netflix also announced... Well, I guess Ubisoft um, announced 
today and you know how they do this it's like you know you guys have been clamoring for a splinter cell so here it is splinter cell the netflix series really it is an really? animated netflix series in the works from uh john wick the john wick creator so it's gonna be cool but like make the game already yeah make, make the game. freaking make game it. like do we care how about an animated series? I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch an animated series because it sounds like it might be actually pretty cool. But just make us the game. I want to play the game. Yeah, Sean, I do are too. Are you on board with this? I am on All board right. with this. I am All right, I'm gonna hold my breath until the game comes out. Yes. Okay. Start now. I have. Hold your breath. I am. You're not. You're you're talking. Yeah, no, no, I'm not holding it all at once. Oh. I didn't mean like a continuous thing. That Hold it for 17 empty. days. Can you hold it for 17 days? I can hold it for 17 seconds, maybe. I'm out of shape because of COVID. <laughs> I've been on my couch for four months, Sean. Tico, you've been on your couch for a year and four months. Yes, six months. But yes. Universal and AMC have agreed to shorten the window between theatrical release and home video release to 17 days. Let it was, me say. It used to be 90 days by the time, 90. like basically they put a, sh a show in the theaters and then it plays for X number of time and then 90 days later it can come to like streaming services or video on demand. And DVD. Yeah, yeah. I am thrilled with this news. 17 um, movie days. Theater? Tico, that's, that's not even three. enough time to go see it with friends if you want to. It's just over two weeks. Yeah. Um, I am I am really glad for this. Listen, I am one who does not feel comfortable going and sitting in a theater and trusting my health and safety to the 16-year-old right who's gotten his first job wiping down the chairs at the Cineplex. Um, I'm, uh, you know, nor do I trust, you know, everybody else out there to you know, who's feeling a little under the weather, who says, it's fine, I'm going to go and see this anyways, and then I have to sit in the seat of, with after that guy and whatever. I am more than happy that 17 days after a blockbuster movie comes out that I will get to watch that blockbuster movie in the comfort of my own home. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, because no one's going, um, I mean, I'm not going to the theater anytime soon. No. I, I, was I mean, I mean I'm going to be honest, though. Here in Canada, we're doing really well. Like, yes, we really are. There's been zero, zero cases in my hometown for weeks. Right. We are not terrible in how we're doing. What was that? You completely cut out. So I didn't hear no, what you said. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I was just saying we're not great, but we're not terrible. I mean, there's there's still some some stuff, you know, that uh, that needs to be. Looked at and addressed with a lot of people, but I yeah I don't want to go into a theater right now. I want to watch this, these movies in my house. Um, Bill and Ted's uh, the the new movie um, Face the Music uh, Face Face the Music is a VOD in theaters same day. Yeah, September first. Uh, uh, September first. We reported which, it last week. They said August thirty first. Now it's been moved a day to September first. Like wait, what? When did it get moved by one day? one day sean you'll be okay with it's it. too late I, I mean that's it they lost my interest now i mean that extra day is I'll, too low too i'll far. watch it twice for sean okay um <laughs> i i'm just i'm glad that they're doing this the movie theater experience is going to change it is not going to be the same thing um you know i i would i still want to watch these movies but i don't want to put my health and my family's health at risk so i can see the latest avengers or star wars or whatever it might be let me ask you something all like, right. Just let's just throw this out there. Do sure. you feel ultimately are are theaters necessary anymore? Do you no. feel like the theater experience completely is even necessary? Consider gaming even. You don't even have to leave your house to buy a game anymore. Everything's digital. Yeah. You don't have to leave so your house to buy music. You don't have to go to the store to buy music. Do you feel like movies should follow the same thing? Like, should movies so, just become Netflix, Hulu, period, absolutely. that's it? Absolutely. So here's the thing. The last few movies I've been to in the theater, 
I've had a guy in front of me that talked through the entire thing loudly. I've had a guy behind me who had the worst laugh in the world and laughed at the most inappropriate times. And it yeah. takes you out of the experience. I will tell you, like, if you're sitting there and there's a serious moment and the guy's like, oh, he snapped him into dust. <laughs> you know, and right behind, like, <laughs> you know, it's just not, It's it, it takes you out of the moment. You're like, dude, like, shut up. Or, or the ki- or the little kids constantly asking questions, the kids asking questions, um, the having to go at a certain time. You know, if I want to, you, you got to watch. You want to watch this movie? Guess what? Nine thirty. We're gonna start, and that's it. The Not woman, the woman, the or like the it. the people rustling the plastic bags, trying yeah. to get their candy uh, out of their purse or whatever. Fifty dollars. I, I say that because this happens. Drinks. This happens yeah. all the time to me. Um, you know, this, this, this whole thing, you know, you have to go to the bathroom and you're going to miss, you know, don't go to the bathroom to seven minutes. Who goes I mean, to the bathroom just, in the middle of a film? Like, seriously, I try not to. And for the most part, I've been pretty good, but you know, we're getting older. We can't, you know, don't make these decisions on our own anymore. Speak for yourself. I'm not old. I am. Um, I'm well seasoned. I, I want this, exp- like the experience is, it's like when you, it's like when you like, Man, I remember that video game, and you try to pop back an old PS One game into a system and play it. And you're like, <laughs> "This is garbage." Why did I enjoy this? Right. <laughs> Thinking about the experience of a movie theater and actually having the movie theater experience are two different things, and they are not the same. And I think that everybody romanticizes that environment and everything like that. Yeah. Whereas I would much rather sit down on my couch with a blanket and some, you know, ninety nine cent bowl of popcorn that I popped in my microwave and a drink well, and a pause button. If you think about the movie going experience, it is yep. of a bygone age. This there was a time, obviously, where that was the only way to watch a film. You couldn't yeah. you couldn't watch a film at home. Pure I still remember the days uh when you had to go to the library and you rented a reel to reel film of star wars and it wasn't even the full film it was like an abridged version of star wars that you got to take home and watch on a projector right i'm not that old sean oh yes you are i don't i don't remember you were alive during these times but i and I, i remember these things and then of course you got the days of vcrs when eventually you could start bringing movies home rent movies You know, and it's gotten to the point where things are so easily distributed digitally into the home theaters and people now have 70, 80 to 100 or more inch televisions. You know, people have projectors that are projecting in their homes 144 inches, right? The movie going experience isn't necessary anymore for a film. No, I'm going to go out there on a limb and say within the next two years the movie going experience will be turned into a premium experience um, only. And I don't think that you'll have large theaters. I think that you, what you'll have, we, we, when we went to Disney, however long ago that was that we were actually allowed to go into the States uh, last, we went to the AMC theater there and they have an AMC theater that has, you get a row, it's four seats, comfortable seats, a little table bench in front of you and a menu and a waitress. And you, you know, and ordering like burgers and asparagus, and like well, you know, they, fancy... they do that here. Like, so we've got the VIP theater. So yeah. you think you think the yeah. movie going experience will simply be rele- relegated to the VIP experience now? I think it's going to be a premium experience. Um, you're going to see these theaters converted into it, like that that thing. Yeah. It is going to it's going to be beer. It's going to be yeah. your individual tables that you're going to have. Like, hey, Sean, let's you know, let's get our families here. We're going to go. We got a table for ten at the at the theater at nine o'clock, and we're going to go watch yeah. whatever it is while and, we you know, eat. While we eat, yeah. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. That VIP experience is incredible. I've done it th- yeah. three times now with friends. You know, it's a great evening out. It's not cheap. You know, for Dorothy yep. and I to see the movie and eat dinner, it's about a hundred bucks for the evening. Okay. Yep. Or a little bit more, I think. But still. Um, but I'm happy to do that because it is an experience. It's not just sit down and watch a movie. It's sit down, order your meal, have good conversation with your friends before the movie starts, enjoy yep. the movie while you're eating dinner, you know, having a beer, whatever. I agree. I think that experience could stay, 
but I think the general movie going experience is no longer necessary. If you no, released no. movies video on demand or straight to Netflix or Hulu or any other streaming service, Disney plus on the day it's supposed to release, people will sit down and watch it. They will. And, and you, you see this on these, you know, um, extraction, um, was one of the highest watched movies of, of Netflix's history when that when that popped in the other day, yeah, a few weeks back or whatever it was, like that, and that's what we're seeing. We're seeing, I mean, we're all stuck in our homes for the most part, anyway. So why wouldn't we watch these things? And we're but all happy. So get, a lot like I don't know about anyone else, but my wife and I are happy to just be at home and watching a movie on our big screen. Yeah, yeah, I am. I am more than happy to. You know, like I've only got a fifty-five inch, sixty-five inch TV um, for for watching stuff. Peasant. I know it's ridiculous. You're such a peasant. Um, I know, but <laughs> I just, the experience is fantastic. I love like sit back on the couch, popcorn, drinks, whatever, and just enjoy the, the experience. That's what I want to do rather than I, I, the, the stress of getting myself, my wife and my daughter ready to leave the house to go see a movie is beyond, you know, what, what I need at any point in my life. Yeah, uh, we get there, you know, we've got to make sure that we've got everything packed for the kid. We've got to have make sure we have wipes. We get there, you know, then I've got to wait in line. I got to pay $70 for some popcorn and candy. And then we get there and then we get halfway through the movie and Leah decides that she's bored of it and we're going to go. And then I've missed half the movie and I've spent a hundred bucks. Yep. I agree. So I'd much rather spend, you know, 20 bucks, order this thing on VOD and enjoy that you know, I can pause it. I can, you know, Leah has to go to the bathroom. She can go to the bathroom. She wants to, Shannon wants another drink. She can go get another drink and we're going to do that. And it's going to be comfortable. And that's how I want to do my movie experience. Sean, make it happen. Done. Good. Thanks. As of September 1st. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. No problem. It's, it's what I'm here for. All right. Good. And I'm not here for anything else. No, that's it. You're walking away. That's it. Um, All right. It's been a pretty slow week. I don't think we have anything else really substantial uh, to talk quiet, about. You know, quiet week. But we're putting out tons of interview content. So if this wasn't enough for you, there's plenty well, not just to interview contents. We've got game reviews as well. Board game reviews are coming up. Um, we've got a good schedule of content coming up over the next several weeks. Um, yeah. So definitely check out our YouTube channel if you're not already. Uh, of course, that is at youtube.com slash OMG Nexus. You know, give us a subscribe. We could use the numbers. Uh, like the content. Give us a comment. Let's chat. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. Yeah. Or if you don't like it, tell us why. And if you if you don't like Tico's ugly mug, then I'll find someone else. That's up to you. You tell me. I can use a thermos. I can use like a saucer, whatever. It doesn't have to be a mug. <laughs> You can follow the show on Twitter at the OMG Hour. Uh, we're also on Facebook as OMG Nexus. I am pretty much Zion Tain everywhere. So you can look me up. X-I-A-N-T-A-Y-N-E. All right. You can follow me at Mr. Second Place in most places. And our Instagram uh, was where we put all of our board gaming content is flipping tables with OMG. That's right. And we don't actually flip tables because that would be messy. It would. That's right. So anyway, thanks for uh, listening. Thanks for watching. This has been episode number 378 of the OMG, just under an hour. We'll be back again next week. Bye, guys. Ports in, and then view projected images for the purpose of entertainment. Makes perfect sense. I suggest we beat Majestic at their own devious little game.